Family Theater presents Walter Brennan and Gigi Perot. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Land of Sunshine, starring Walter Brennan. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Gigi Perot. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray, pray together as a family. And now to our drama, Land of Sunshine, starring Mr. Walter Brennan as Simon and featuring Verna Felton as Sally. <laughs> Sun's pretty warm today, Simon. Yeah. Same as it was yesterday. Nothing like the weather in St. Petersburg. No. Can't be it, Bill. Kind of quiet today. Yeah. Real peaceful. <sighs> Uh-oh. Here comes that chatterbox widow woman. Seems to me she could pick out some other bench on Central Avenue. Just uh, don't pay no attention to her. No. Can't be done. I'm getting. Well, no one's driving me off this bench. Well, if you can stand her yammering side, that's up to you. See you later. So long. Good morning, Simon. Beautiful Florida weather. Mind if I sit down? You've been asking me that same question every day for two weeks. I'm very polite. And I've been giving you the same answer. This is a free country. Thank you. I will have a seat. Ugh. Don't thank me. It's a, it's a public bench, you know. You're pretty grumpy this morning. Guess I got a right to be grumpy if I want to. I brought my little portable radio with me. I ain't blind. Do you ever listen to tunes of the 20s? Nope. Oh, it really brings back memories. Here we are. Turn that blasted blaring down, would you? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Thought it might be pleasant. I'll turn it off. Mm. I didn't mean to shout my fool head off, Mrs. Crane. Sally. Uh, Sally. I understand. I'm sorry. Really, I am. Oh, I've been kind of short-tempered lately. Still not feeling up to par? Uh, just getting old, I'd say. Oh, now, Simon, don't even think that. Why not? I'm just a mess of aches and pains. Why don't you find yourself a small job? Haven't I been telling you I'm retired? Yes, I know. I suppose you've always been sickly. I never had a sick day in my life until a while back. Guess you wouldn't believe that until six months ago I ran a big farm up in Wisconsin. More than 500 acres. I always thought you looked competent. Of course, uh, after my wife died three years ago, it got kind of lonely rattling around in that big house. So you decided to retire and rest in the sun? Yeah. You know, that's exactly what happened to me. Same thing? Almost. After a few months down here, it just started aching all over. Well, you don't look as though you're ailing now. Not now. But I didn't think I'd ever get well. Oh, I had terrible back pains. Right across the shoulder blade? Why, yes. And, and I felt tired all the time. You figure you just can't get out of bed in the morning? The more sleep I got, the more tired I felt. That's it. Oh, my legs began to bother me. I had to hobble around on a cane. Well, what do you know? <laughs> get mine right here. Then I went to see this doctor. And in a few weeks, oh, I was a new person. Don't believe in him. Never took a doctor's advice my whole life, and I guess I'm too old to start now. Oh, I guess when a man's healthy, he doesn't think of doctrine. What did he do for you? Who? The doctor. Oh, oh, I got him just in time. Felt like I was dying. Hmm. Too bad you don't believe in him. If you did, you might even visit my doctor. Don't go putting words in my mouth. If I want to see a doctor, I will. Well, if you insist. Of course I insist. What's his name? I'm not busy now. Might as well take you right over there with me. Ah, 
I told you, John. I told you she'd get him off that bench. I don't trust that Sally Crane. Well, it don't look to me like they're leaving together. Simon's walking away ahead of her. Oh, he's just trying to get away, if you ask me. Look, she's caught up to him right now. Oh, it ain't fair, Bill. He's, he's, he's hobbling around on a cane. Don't matter, John. I win the bet. She got him off that bench with her. Okay, okay. Here's your quarter. Well. It's a good thing Sally had you over here, Mr. Stone. Uh, uh, do you... Do you think... Uh, you think I'll... Die, Doc? Oh, now, now. Whatever gave you that idea? Well, you've been writing on that paper for ten minutes. It must be pretty serious. Yeah, you'll be as good as ever. And what I'm writing is just your new diet. Whew. Boy, that's a relief. Your ailment is pretty common down here in St. Pete. Oh, you mean it's something like a cold? No, it's more than that, but nothing that can't be cured. First thing, though, you've got to build yourself up. And then you'll have to operate? <laughs> I've never known a case that needed an operation. Well, for heaven's sake, Doctor, what have I got? A bad case of neolitis. Neolitis? Huh? Why? Oh, oh, oh. that's terrible. Well, don't let the name scare you. I promise you'll be all right. Now, here's your diet, and I want you to follow it exactly. Sure thing, Doc. You better will. Holy smoke. Anything wrong? Oh, where in tarnation am I going to get this stuff? Duck bagarade, halibut souffle with... Almond sauce, artichoke bottoms, chicken tetrazzini, Welsh rabbit, rink tum diddy, hassan pfeffer. <coughs> Why, I never even, even heard of them myself. Well, yeah, that is a problem. Why can't I eat some good old American food like ham and eggs, see? And I can build myself up on steaks just as well. Are you going to take my advice or aren't you? Well, it is no cooking the whole steak can pronounce half of these things, let alone cook them. You just wait one minute. Sally, will you come in here a minute? How is he, Doctor? He's got neolitis, all right. A bad case of it. Oh, that's what I thought. Uh, he had all the symptoms. Well, that isn't half of it. Take a look at this diet. Just look at it. Let me see. Halibut souffle with hands, ducks. Oh, I've got an idea. I can fix these meals for you. Would you do that, Sally? Oh, sure. I'd be glad no, to. No, nothing doing. I can take care of myself. Not that I don't appreciate your offer, though. All right, if you still want those backaches and everything... Now hold your horses, Doc. Maybe some pills would do the trick instead of all that fancy stuff. Are you going to do what I say? Don't worry, Doctor. I'll see that Simon eats just what you prescribe. You heard the likes of it. All that fancy food. Enough to make a body sick. Then it's settled. No, it's not. I can't just grub food off you. The doctor says I gotta eat the Welsh rabbit rink tum diddy. I'll do it, but but you gotta let me pay my way. Of course you can. As a matter of fact, there's something you can do for me that's very important. Yeah? What's that? Well, I've got a small orange grove and something terrible is wrong. The oranges are no bigger than walnuts. Hmm. You look after my trees and I'll fix your meals. You're getting the better of the bargain, Sally. <laughs> All right, you got a deal, Sally. Shake. Now, if you'll excuse me... Oh, Doctor, could I see you alone a moment? Oh, yes, Sally. Is anything wrong? Well, nothing serious, but uh, would you excuse me, Simon? I'll see you outside. Mm, sure thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, we put it over. He fell hook, line, and sinker. Frankly, Sally, I don't like this business. You could be right about him, and you could be very wrong. Now, I thought you trusted my judgment. That's the only reason I agreed, and it better turn out for the best. Give me two weeks. All right, Sally, two weeks. <laughs> Can you handle those tools all right, Simon? For heaven's sake, Sally, I'm no invalid. Well, I'm sort of responsible. Now, you just wait a minute, Mrs. Sally Crane. No one is responsible for me. I'm old enough to take care of myself. But the doctor... The doctor gave me a fancy diet. He didn't say nothing about sitting around twiddling my thumbs. Well, all right. Hmm. Look at that branch. Hmm. One you can't grow an orange worth a plug scent. Well, it looks healthy to me, Simon. That's the unhealthiest tree i ever seen. Why, those... My leaves... trees have more leaves than any grove around. <laughs> Sally, that's rich. Don't you know you got to trim the dead stuff out? Is that why the fruits are small? Well, that's only one reason. But I've always watered them so carefully. A tree is like a man, Sally. Can't live on just water alone. You gotta feed them, too. Oh, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard of. Yeah, that's how much you know about it. Now, here's some dirt. Just take a look at that. Yes? This is tree food. 
I can just look at it and tell you that no self-respecting tree would ever get a decent meal off in that dirt. Simon, you talk as if that tree were human. Trees are living, breathing things. You gotta feed them, pet them, and take care of them. Just like you would babies. If you don't, they grow wild and pretty soon they die. Why shouldn't I talk about them as human beings? If it wasn't for them, there wouldn't be any human things. I know about trees because that used to be a business with me. What do you suppose makes oxygen in the air? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. Trees, that's what. Leonardo da Vinci discovered that. Trees take the waste from the earth, make a meal out of it, and give you back oxygen to breathe. That's what the leaves are for. But if you want to get the good from them, you've got to take care of them. Yes, them, treat them right, and they'll give you a whole lot of things. Food for your table, firewood to warm your house, and the very air you breathe. Simon, the way you talk about trees is simply wonderful. Yeah, now if I could set up a lab someplace where I could figure out the things this here poverty-stricken dirt of yours needs... Well, you can fix it up on the sun porch. Oh, no, it'd make an awful mess. Oh, I don't mind at all. Well, all right. Well, you must make our list of the things you need. You tend to your cooking, Sally. I'll take care of this end. All right, Simon. I'll let you know when lunch is ready. (laughs) These women. Didn't know a tree had to eat. How goes it? Oh, can't complain too much. Just the usual aches and pains, Bill. I just seen Simon. Loaded down with garden supplies and headed this way. What's he been up to? Ain't been around for a week or more. That Sally Crane got her hooks into him. Oh, here he comes now. <clears throat> oh, hi, Simon. Hi, Bill and John. Why don't you sit a while, Simon? Knock yourself out running around loaded up that way. Don't bother me none. Uh, buying yourself orange groom? No, just helping Sally out. Sally? Uh, 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 Mrs. Crane. <laughs> so she's finally worked you around a little finger, eh? Now, look here, Bill. Just what do you mean by that track? Uh, no offense, Simon. She's a fine little woman. Might make a man a good wife. Yeah, well, don't you go jumping to no conclusions. Nothing to it at all. How's your back been lately? Well, it hasn't bothered me the last couple of days. Complete recovery, eh? <laughs> Love can sure work some big miracles. <laughs> One more wise crack out of you, and I'll show you whether I'm ailing or not. Now hold on. I'm just asking after your health. Besides, you must be all right now. No sick man would be running all over town, loaded down like a pack mule. Yeah, well, that just goes to show you don't know what you're talking about. I am a sick man, a mighty sick man. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Simon. What's ailing you? Well, I've got uh, neolitis. What? Neolitis, it's a tough disease to beat. It can kill a man if you don't watch out. Oh, never heard of that before. Well, Doc Burr spotted it right off. Uh, is he going to operate? I don't know yet. he got to build me up first. Oh, that sounds reasonable. That's why I'm helping Sally. The diet he fixed up for me is a Lulu. I don't know a restaurant in town that'd be able to serve those meals. Is that right? So Sally offered to do the cooking. I'm just paying her back. I'm not that sick that I can take charity and she won't take no money. Well, no matter how silly that widow Crane is, her brother is a mighty fine doctor. Yes, see, you bet you... Her brother? What, did she tell you? Oh, oh, sure, sure, I knew. Well, Bill, uh, I gotta be going. See you around. So long, John. So long. Yeah, see you, Simon. Need latest. Hmm. Maybe that's what's ailing me, John. Could be. Gotta ask my doctor about that. Simon, you're just in time. I got a real treat for you today. Yeah, and I got something to say. A delicious bouillabaisse. Here, just smell that. Mmm, does smell good. What you call it? Bouillabaisse. That's a French way of preparing fish. Hmm, mighty appetizing. You sit right down now and start eating before it gets cold. Hey, Sally, I want a word with you first. Oh, sure, Simon. Oh, all these packages. Simon, what in the world did you buy? You know, there's nothing I hate worse than a liar. Oh, you got all those wonderful chemicals. My heaven, Sally, you're not paying no attention to me. Oh, yes, I am. There's nothing you hate worse than a liar. That's right. Well, I declare... Oh, just look at all these things. Where did you pick up all that knowledge, Simon? Well, a farmer isn't necessarily an idiot, you know. Oh, I know that. The minute I saw you, I said to myself, 
Sally, there's an intelligent man. Mm, you can't always tell by looking. You're right. But I suppose part of it is a certain alertness. Mm -hmm, that's true. Now, uh, you were saying something about a liar? I, well, uh, oh, it's not important. Now, Simon, if you got something to tell me, get it off your chest. Well, it's just that, you know how some shopkeepers uh, lie about their products? I just don't like it, that's all. Well, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you tending my grove. Those trees have really perked up in just a week. Well, there's no mystery about that. All the same, I'll have a nice crop of oranges this year. <laughs> Least I could do. Oh, of course I don't want you overworking. You know, you know it's funny, uh, I've been feeling fine since you started serving me these meals, and maybe now I'll be able to go off the diet, huh? Oh, no, oh, no. I, I, I mean, neolitis is dangerous. Sure is a funny disease. Could be the doc made a mistake. Oh, no, I, I'm sure he didn't. After all, you can't cure neolitis in a week. Uh, still in all... You could have a relapse. Oh, and that'd be even worse. You've just got to follow the doctor's orders. Well, I suppose you're right. And Sally... Hmm? <laughs> that's not too hard to do, you know. <laughs> you mean that, Simon? Sure, I mean it. You certainly have a hand with meat and vegetables. And besides, I sort of get a kick out of working in the grove. That's the sweetest thing I've ever heard. Uh, uh, Sally? Yes? I got a... a confession to make. Now, Si. <laughs> you know, man gets some funny ideas, you know, and, well... What are you trying to say, Si? Well, when you first came around to that bench, I thought, yes. by gosh, you know, I thought you were an awful pest. Oh, you did? I did, too. Of course, I changed my mind. You really don't think so anymore? <laughs> Why, not a bit of it. <laughs> Matter of fact, I kind of like having you around. Not that you still don't come out with some awful silly ideas once in a while. Oh, now you've gone and spoiled what you said before. <laughs> don't be so thin-skinned, Sally. Can't I even tease you a little? Simon, I don't know what to make of you sometime. Well, you know, after all, you did call me grumpy. And you were. I thought you'd bite my head off. Oh, I didn't mean a word of it. Personally, I, I, I don't think it's good for people to live, uh, well, to, to be alone. Do you? Mm, depends. No, no. I, I mean, a man needs... A man needs well, a lot of things. That's it. But it don't follow that he always gets what he wants. Sometimes all he has to do is ask. <laughs> well, so, Sally, I must say your face sort of warms me up. Maybe you and me could... Yes? Do... Someone's at the back door. Yeah, let him wait. Now, what were you saying? Must be that nitrate I ordered. But you were going to say something. Uh, you better answer the door. If it's a nitrate, I want him to put the bags under the tree. Uh, I I'll get to it this afternoon. I'm coming. Oh, drat those nitrates. That barbecue smells good. Should be ready in a few minutes, Doc. And Sally, I saw Simon when I came in. He really looks fine. He sure did blossom out. I think it's time we told him the truth, Sally. Do we have to, Doc? Yes, Sally, the sooner the better. Well, all right. But don't you dare say one word until we get some of this barbecue inside of him. That's a deal. Take this handle, Doc. I'll go inside and call Simon. Okay. <laughs> The barbecue's ready for serving, Simon. I'll be ready as soon as I get this solution diluted. Mmm, that dead barbecue smells fine. Well, now, as you were si uh, That's the front doorbell. Must be your pal, Bill. Uh, will you just keep mixing this until I get back, Sally? Sure. I'm coming. Hold your horses. What's the matter, Bill? Your finger stuck on the bell? Hello, sir. I didn't want to miss the barbecue. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> You're just in time. Hey, come on out back. Hey, Si. Yeah? How's that terrible disease of yours coming along? <laughs> uh, I don't see that suffering from a serious ailment is funny. I was just wondering what kind of horrible operation would be necessary. <laughs> Say, have you gone crazy? Uh, no, no. Then what's this all about? <laughs> well, you might as well learn the bitter truth. And when you do, it'll kill you. <laughs> For heaven's oh. sakes, Bill. Bill! Oh, yes. Come, come. You, you see, when you told me all about your symptoms, well, I figure I had the same thing. Well, that isn't yeah. very funny. Well, so I dropped into my doctor. I told him about you and your 
Neolitus. <laughs> Keep talking. Well, at first he didn't know what on earth I was talking about. He was, to put it mildly, astonished. Well, he can't know everything. Then I sort of spelled it out for him, and, uh... And what? <laughs> I've never seen a man laugh so much before. <laughs> That's a new one on me, he says. <laughs> what are you driving at, Bill? <laughs> he told me that it comes from the Latin. You see, in Latin, N-I-H-I-L means nothing. <laughs> so he figured out that you had a, a severe case of nothing itis. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> yes. And when I told him about that rich diet of special fancy dishes, why, the poor old doc couldn't talk for laughing. <laughs> he just waved me out of his office very weakly. <laughs> so that's it. The best scheme I ever heard of for a widow woman trying to trap a man. Well, we'll see about that. And, well, where are you going, Si? Out to the barbecue. <laughs> Yes, Simon? Come in here and bring Doc Burrows with you. What's the matter? I'll tell you when you come inside. Oh, he sounded real upset. I think I can guess the reason. All right, you two. What's your little game now? Calm down, Simon. Don't work yourself into a rage. I'll work myself into whatever I want to work myself into. What's got into you? Just a little information, that's all. I don't understand. So I'm a sick man, am I? I got a dangerous disease, have I? You found out. Well, you're dang tootin' I did. I've got nihilitis, have I? And I've got plenty of nothing. All right, what's your little game? Come on now and come clean. Sit down and I'll tell you. Don't try any monkey shines either, Doc, because all I know about you is... I know you're Sally's brother and I knew it for some time. Oh, you didn't. I'm not as stupid as you think. Oh, Simon, I never thought that. Listen to me, Simon. Maybe I made a mistake by not telling you the truth, and maybe I didn't. But now you listen to what I've got to say. Well, it better be good. When you came to see me, you had a hundred aches and pains. You were dragging yourself around with a cane. You felt a hundred years old. Now, what's that got to do with it? Well, take a good look at yourself now. Have you got any pains? And where's your cane? My, uh, my cane? Uh, uh, you don't need it now, do you? You had a real disease, as real as appendicitis. I just made up my own name for it because so many retired men suffer from the same thing here in St. Petersburg. Are you serious? Of course I am. So long as a man is busy and interested in life, he's like a well-oiled machine. But when he stops working like he did, he just gets rusty, same as a machine. Then why in tarnation didn't you tell me that? I tried to tell you to find some work, but just said you didn't intend lifting a finger, not after retiring. I tried to tell you that you'd feel better... But you only snorted. Sally told me you were as stubborn as a mule That's and right. probably wouldn't listen right. to advice unless you figured you had to. That's right. And from what I can see now, she was right. But I... I... That's the whole story. Sure, Sally and I plotted to put one over on you. But that died. There was only one way of putting you to some use for work. And that was to make you think you had to pay her back. All right. We did fool you. But for your own good... And we succeeded, if you ask me. Yeah, but I... Seems to me Sally has an apology coming to her. Oh, Sally, I, I'm just a stubborn old fool. Oh, no, Simon. You try to be an old curmudgeon, but I don't think you are, really. After all you did for me, too. Those wonderful meals, getting me interested in your orange grove, and, and I figured you were hatching up some awful plot. Oh, don't say that, Simon. You see, I, I have been plotting, and, and I have been sort of trying to get you to propose. I guess I'm a silly woman. Hmm. I suspected that, too, for some time, Sally. You did? And you never said anything? Well, I tried to a couple of times. You're telling me to stop wasting my time. No, Sally, to tell you the truth, I... That is to say, uh, well, I... Yes, I... Well, Sally, what I mean to say is... There comes a time in life when it does seem like a pretty good idea for a woman like you and a man like me to... Yes, Simon, to... yes... Oh, what I'm trying to ask you is... Yes. Maybe you and me, uh, uh, isn't that someone at the door? I don't hear anything. You don't? Not a thing. Sally, will you marry me? Yes, Si, I will. Thanks. <laughs> si, aren't you going to kiss me? Later. I'm expecting another shipment of chemicals, and I want to tell that fellow who wasn't knocking at the door where to leave him. Now, 
now, here again is your hostess, Gigi Perot. Thank you, Mr. Lafrano. Mr. Brannan! Oh, Mr. Brannan! Oh, yes, Gigi. Uh, what can I do for you? I wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed your performance. It was certainly nice, and I think you're just wonderful. Well, that's mighty nice of you to say that. You know, you know, I think you're pretty nice yourself. Really? Sure do. Then, then would you help me with something? Uh-oh. <laughs> I might have known I was getting too much sugar for a nickel here. Oh, unless you don't want to help. Oh, I want to, all right. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, it's this. This is family theater, and tonight I'm the hostess. And I'm supposed to say something about family prayer. But there's so many things that should be said, I just can't make up my mind. Like, uh, like a kid picking out penny candy, huh? Yes, I used to have that trouble when I was a little girl. Guess I just haven't outgrown it yet. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, when I was a little boy. Uh, let me see, uh, family prayer. I wanted to say something about how family prayer keeps the family together and how much a family being together means to the children. Well, that seems like a pretty good thing to say. And I wanted to say how much God loves little children and how he wants them to have their parents with them to see that they grow up all right. Well, that sounds pretty good, too. And you might say how we all become as little children in the sight of God when we pray. That's a mighty good thing, too, you know. Yes, I've already thought of that. Oh, you had, huh? But I'm glad you said it because I might have forgotten. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure to serve you. You know, Gigi, I think you can boil the whole thing down to just two lines. Bet I know which ones you mean. <clears throat> I'll bet you do at that. If I say the first one, Mr. Brennan, will you say the second one? I sure will. Ready? Ready. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Land of Sunshine, starring Walter Brennan and Gigi Perot as hostess. Verna Felton was featured as Sally. Others in our cast were Pat McGeehan, Norman Field, and Cliff Clark. The script was written by Martin Fass, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present The Big One, starring Pat O'Brien, David Wayne, and Gene Ruth. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater's broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.